Hey everybody, welcome to Ranked Old Fart, the series where I go over Overwatch, the community, the game, the season at hand, and my current rank and how I feel with the game. So first off, let's get into Season 6. So I started off Season 6 going 4 and 6 in prelims, which actually dropped me down into bronze about that 1200 range again. So at that point, I decided, you know what, it's time for me to shape up. Instead of flexing, I need to stick on a couple of players. And those characters for me were Zinn and Winston. I figured with Winston, I can dive the back line, make sure their healers die. And then with Zenyatta, I always hated the fact that at least the way I felt, which was probably wrong, but it's the way I felt, that I would be playing support or I'd be playing tank and nothing would die. I'd be standing there doing my job nobody could kill anything so i decided with zinyata i could fill that second support spot as well as get in on the actual killing of things and make sure that things died and we could kind of progress win team fights things like that so you're probably wondering where i ended the season what my goal was things like that so my goal was to get to at least silver but most likely in 1700s best case scenario i'd get to gold i did make it into the 1600s and that was making my goal. So I got there. So why was I in bronze? And that kind of leads me to my second point. The season start drops that Blizzard decided to do. So it actually stopped here in season six, and I'm very happy for that. But if you never heard the news, Blizzard at the start of every competitive season was basically dropping everybody from five to 700 SR. Even if you won all 10 games, you would actually be placed probably 100 SR lower than you were at the end of the previous season. And this kind of got to me a bit because their whole thing was if you play 50 games, you'll actually get back to where you were the, at the end of the last season, which is kind of problematic for someone like me. I mean, I'm a father husband i work a nine to five job it's hard for me to actually get games in and have some type of family life as well i was averaging 40 games per season before season five so that means i wasn't even playing enough games to get back to my previous rank so it's one of those things that we know when they said that they were getting rid of this in season six thank god that they said it happened in season four and five. But if I remember correctly, when we first found out they were doing this, when it first came out that they were doing this, season three was also tacked onto that as well. So how did I get into bronze? Compton, you're, you're not that bad of a player, are you? And you know what, maybe, maybe I am. Maybe I am that bad of a player and I just need to improve. But basically what happened in the previous seasons was after season two, mid gold. Yeah, I didn't play a lot, didn't move up and down a lot, mid gold. So I go into season three, go two and eight, drop almost, you know, a thousand SR basically. So I got pissed off, just left the game, didn't play any more games that season, just took a break from Overwatch. Come back for season four with like two weeks left in the season, do my prelims, went four, five, and one in bronze, 1100 or 1200. I don't remember what it was, but it, I was very upset with that and I just trucked away that season played probably 60 70 games got up into silver you know above where i was the previous season when i came out of prelims i was like all right cool we're, we're good and then we go into season five i go four five and one again end up back at 1100 or 1200 and i am just livid and i end up playing like almost 200 matches in that season because i don't know i maybe if i play more matches maybe i'll win Maybe I'll get up further, but the horrible part about season five is, man, I had 25% or more of my games. I actually counted them. I believe it was something like 57 out of 200 games that I had a lever or a thrower on my team. Maybe it was 47 out of like 180, but yeah, I just, so 25% of my games are automatically a loss. Although I did win a couple of those. So at the end of the season five, I ended up dropping from my silver that I had gotten to down back to 1400 because I was playing with some toxic players, had some levers at the end of the season, just all in all didn't have a good end of the season. So that's basically how I came into season six 
at bronze and have to work my way back up. So that kind of leads me into my next thing I want to talk about in this video, and that is toxicity. After my experience in season five, I think I have a lot of good experience on toxicity and you know what's going on with that. And one thing I noticed, even when I had players that I was grouped with that were doing this, but yelling at people and not cooperating with your team and blaming others is a surefire way to losing the majority of your games. And I started thinking on this, and a big huge part of that is just the people that you end up playing with so i know the community themselves have mentioned a lot of things like you know q for role things like that and had huge discussions over it but i kind of want to step away from that and look at something a little bit different so if you have ever tried to group up in a six stack and you couldn't find a six stack to play against in q You'll notice you get a huge freaking handicap. And because of this, most people don't want to queue together. It's like, it's just, you don't do it, right? So that's when I started thinking, you know, what is the best way to ensure that you don't have things like people complain about, you know, having multiple one tricks on their team or having toxic players or levers? What is the best way to ensure that you don't get any of those people on your team and you get a team that's cohesive wants to fill roles works together has their roles that they play and it dawned on me that this whole time we've been you know kind of forced to not do what can actually solve that and the thing that solves that is grouping up if you have six players in your group guess what Unless you brought a toxic player in or brought a lever in, you're not going to get any of that. If you, if you brought in two, you know, one trick mercies, that's your own fault at that point. But if you go as a six stack, you can make sure that nothing happens. The big problem, though, is Blizzard have set up this system that handicaps you. And granted, there are some people talking about min-maxing with three stacks and things like that to get the most gains and least kind of losses, things like that. But it still stands that you don't want to do that because you're going to get penalized for it. And I really think that that needs to go away. If that went away and people were just like, you know what, you can solo queue if you want, but our primary goal, since it is a t team based game, it's based around your composition, things like that. Our goal is to get people to group up. We want you to group up. They put in that group up button, but nobody uses it because they don't want to get penalized. We need to like push forward and say, you need to group up. Get rid of that handicap system. Encourage people to group up. That is the way that you get rid of toxicity in this game because then people will be going into games where they have less of a chance to get that toxic player, get that one trick Torbjorn, anything like that that the things that they don't want they can ensure that they're not going to get them because they're grouping up with people they know don't do those things and that's kind of the way that you fix toxicity in this game right now i know it's kind of a crazy idea but compton what about you know we need to think about the solo cures and the duo cures no screw all that you know what this is a team game with a team of six you know you're meant to be going into it as a six stack let's promote grouping up and that will lower the toxicity. It'll be a much more fun time for everybody who isn't toxic and wants a good game. All right, so moving on to the next thing on my agenda for today is the character changes here recently in the past. So as I'm recording this today, we actually got the latest Mercy changes where she actually has a time to cast on her res. So I wanna talk about Mercy first since it's kind of the freshest thing going on. There's a big problem with Mercy. She's basically 100% pick rate. And I see all of these big time YouTubers dodging around it and saying all these different things. But the simple fact is, as long as she can basically res somebody every single fight, if you don't bring her, you're basically forcing a 6v7 on yourself unless you immediately kill her. So until that changes, she is going to be a must pick because she can res somebody every single fight and it's a 7v6 or 6v7. So moving on to kind of the Ana changes and she's getting a tiny buff, a 10 damage buff to her attacks and everybody is like is saying online that this isn't good enough, blah blah blah, it's not going to do anything for her. But to me, when I would play Ana, 
the thing that I had the biggest problem with was far mercies. You know, and it's just because I nobody on the team would be trying to kill them. I'm the healer in the back in the back line, just getting pelted by it. So why can't I do anything about it as Ana? And now that she has the 10 extra damage, she'll be able to three hit Mercy. She'll be able to three hit Farah. You know how many times as Ana I hit somebody four or three times and before I can get the fourth shot, they're already dropped down out of my sight because they took three hits. If those three hits could kill that person, which it can soon, it will make her a lot more viable pick instead of having to bring, like, switch to a hit scan to deal with the pharmacy. Moving on to Junk. So, Junkrat has a basically one, basically has an insta combo for a kill. And they gave him two mines. When they came out with that, one of the first things I said was, I hope they nerfed the damage because then it's literally going to be insta kill, insta kill. And he's basically going to wipe two people off the map and that's going to be wins. And really, I thought Junkrat was a good character before that had untapped potential. But now that he has two mines and people can just spam that mine out, huge, huge. He's even in, you know, pro play, things like that. Moving on to Hog. And Hog, I actually like Hog now. You know, I, it, I, there was some times with the hook that I did not like the guy. And playing a lot of, uh, a lot of support, that happens. That happens a lot. The way he is now, yes, he can hook you, but his team has to help you out. And the one thing I want to note about Hog is kind of like, you know, with Mercy and with Honor right now, where people are saying that 10 damage isn't going to help her. Everybody claimed that the changes to the breather weren't going to do anything. He was still going to be trashed here. But all of a sudden, he was almost perfect just like Reaper. Everybody talked about how the Reaper lifesteal was not going to make him viable whatsoever. He was still going to be trash, and guess what? It actually made him viable outside of countering triple tank. So it's one of those things that until you actually see it in the hands of people who know in competitive play and see how they use it, I'd say we need not talk about changes. All right, so moving on to Devo, And this is kind of the last character I'm going to talk about right here, but... Diva is one of my original characters I really loved to play. Even back when the Defense Matrix was on a cooldown, I loved to play her. And that's when she had like the four or five second bomb time, where literally everybody, even Zenyatta, could be completely out in the open and still get away. But the thing that I have to mention about Diva is her biggest problem back then, and kind of one of her biggest problems now, is her giant crit box. I don't see a lot of people talking about it. But to me, when you're in a, when you're in brawling, you know, if you're going off one v one, it's fine. But if you're in the middle of the brawl, you have multiple people shooting at you. That crit box basically makes you ineffective as an actual tank. Basically, you're what Roadhog was before, without the instant of his hook combo. You know, you, you have to do it over a little more course of time, land a couple more of those missiles, but she's effectively old Roadhog. And it's really interesting to think about because, you know, first, the big problem with D.Va and why nobody played her on release was the fact that she couldn't tank because she'd use her defense matrix and then she just took damage to the face and was out of her mech. So, I mean, it's one of those things I would like them still... Like I had said back when the game released, to take her crit box and make it smaller. All right, so coming up to my last kind of thing I want to cover here is season seven. I haven't done my prelims yet. The uh, season just started yesterday from when I'm recording this. Now I'll probably get to it probably next week, Monday and Tuesday. But my goal for this season is to continue with Zen and Winston. I actually saw extreme benefit to playing those two characters. My Zenyatta was a 60% win percentage. My Winston was almost there. Uh, if I have to, I'll play Mercy, but I hate playing Mercy at this point. I just, I don't know. I, I'm just not a fan of Mercy. I played her for a while because I played Murder Mercy, but now I'm just tired of her. And as far as where I want to get, I want to get to gold. I want to move up from silver to gold. So the next next week, you'll actually be getting a silver old fart from me. But uh, my goal for the end of Season 7 is going to be gold. So I can come at you guys with a gold old fart. 
The other thing I'm going to try and do this season is trying three stacks out of it. The thing about three stacks is, yes, you do get that handicap if you don't get another three stack or more. And I've heard people talk about it online, about min-maxing it, and you actually get more SR if you're handicapped versus less SR if you lose. So more SR if you win, less if you lose. And the fact that you're controlling half of the team means there's less of a chance, A, to get toxic players, throwers, levers, and B, to actually contribute to your team in team fights because at least three of you can organize and say hey diva has her bomb let's wait for her to use it and then we'll you know hammer down go in do our thing so you can control the flow of the game a bit more so that's kind of what i want to do is kind of three stack here most likely i'll be playing with vendetta and then somebody else because vendetta is my boy he's off work mondays and tuesdays so we can get some gaming in tuesday is going to be my overwatch stream day so every tuesday i will be playing overwatch i might play it on thursday i might play it on non jackbox sunday sundays but on tuesdays i will be playing overwatch anyways guys that's basically it for the bronze old fart here Actually, I guess I'm a silver old fart, but hey, th this episode started with me being bronze, right? Anyways, guys, I am a Twitch affiliate now. Make sure to jump over to that Twitch channel. Give me that per free Prime sub if you got it, just to kind of help me out. Uh, and I do have a gameplay channel, so any games that I do play that are competitive, I will either record or stream them. In those games, will go on the gameplay channel, on Compton EMT's gameplay channel. You guys can see how I fare, wins, losses. I do put that on the front of the title. So the title will be win or loss or draw, the characters I played, the map I played on, and the range, the 100 range I was in, and then the date. So make sure to check that out. It also has all of my other gameplays up from the Let's Play series I do. And yeah, guys. Anyways, like this video, subscribe, click that bell, and check out another, another video as well as a link to subscribe to the gameplay channel as well. All right, guys. Have a good week. Peace. 1659. New season high. <coughs>